Hi right, guys, welcome to Science in 5. In this video, we're going to discuss electrostatics. Now, the word electrostatics is a combination of two words, electro and statics. The word electro means something to do with charges, and statics, well, something that is stationary. So in essence, when we talk of electrostatics, we are basically talking of stationary charges. Okay. Now, as a brief introduction, let's just talk about the fact that matter is made up of atoms, and uh, there are subatomic particles, three of them, protons, positively charged, Electrons are negatively charged and neutrons have no charge. So, when we speak of a material that is being charged, or that is charged rather, it means we've created an imbalance between the protons and the electrons. What is worth noting, guys, is that the electrons are the only subatomic particles that move. The protons and the neutrons remain inside the nucleus. So, ob objects get charged by either losing or gaining electrons. It is only the movement of electrons that causes that. So in the case of a positively charged object, the object has lost some electrons. In the case of a negatively charged object, negatively charged object, the object has gained some electrons. Okay. Now when it comes to a neutral object, most of the time we would want to visualize a neutral object as an object with no charges in it. But that is not true from our understanding of what matter is made up of. Matter is made up of atoms and atoms contain protons and electrons. So a neutral object has equal numbers of protons and electrons. Okay. What is charge measured in? Well, charge is measured in coulombs. We use the big symbol C for coulombs. Now, the smallest charge to date is the electron charge. Maybe with new technology, we're going to discover that the electron is actually made up of smaller other particles. We don't know, but our current knowledge says the electron charge is the smallest charge with a charge of negative 1,6 times 10 to the power minus 19 Coulomb. That is a very small number, very tiny charge. And then all other charges are whole number integer multiples of electron charge. So when you look at other materials that are charged, we are basically saying we are using the electron as the building block for other charges. This is called the principle of charge quantization. Okay. Now, we can use a formula um, that relates to the principle of charge quantization. If Q is the amount of charge on a material, then that charge is equal to the product of two quantities, N and E. So, the n represents a whole number, an integer, and the e, this nice little dash there, represents the electron charge. So, q equals ne. This is the formula that we use to calculate the number of electrons that need to be added or that a material will lose when its charge changes during the charging process. So, let's move forward now. So, in this example now, we are told um, we have a material that has got a charge of negative 1 coulomb. We want to know how many electrons are transferred to the material. Now, we know that electrons are transferred to the material because it's got a charge of minus. Remember, we said minus means excess. So, using the formula, the formula we said was Q is equal to N times E. Let's rearrange this formula. We want how many? How many means a number. So the number there is the n. So if we divide both sides by e, we remain with n equals big Q over the electron charge. So we're going to have negative 1 over negative 1, comma 6 times 10 to the minus 19. And Using a calculator, we get a nice number that says the answer is 6 
comma 2 5 times 10 to the power 18 electrons. That's a huge number. So the Coulomb is not a very small amount of charge. It is actually quite a large number of, uh, it represents a significant amount of electrons. So it is quite a large number of charge. When we say one Coulomb of charge, we're not talking about a small amount of charge. Okay. How many electrons must be transferred from a material with two nanocoulombs so that it ends up with 3,5 nanocoulomb of charge? Now here we've added another prefix there, there's nano. Um, just like in most of our units, we always have these little prefixes that stand before the units. For example, kilometer, centimeter. So in this case, nano simply means times 10 to the minus 9. Okay, so we want to change the material. We want to add a certain amount of charge so that our final charge is that. So the charge that we're going to transfer, let's call it QT, is going to be the charge that is the final charge on the object minus the initial charge on the object. What is the final charge? is 3,5 times 10 to the minus 9, and the initial charge is 2 times 10 to the minus 9. So in this case, 3,5 minus 2 will give us 1,5 times 10 to the minus 9 Coulomb. So if we remove this amount of charge from this material, it will end up with that amount of charge. Uh, it's a little bit confusing, I know, but remember we are removing electrons, okay? So, if I could make a small number line, like this, right? Remember we said for a material to become positive, you remove electrons. So, if we remove electrons, you move this way, you become more positive. So, from 2 to 5, we're becoming more positive, so we have to remove more electrons, okay? Because we're moving from 2 to 5, so we remove more electrons, okay? Now we know the amount of charge that we need to remove, but the question says how many electrons do we need? Uh, but now we know that the number of electrons is the amount of charge over the electronic charge which is the 1,5 times 10 to the minus 9 all over your 1,6 times 10 to the negative 19. You can get an n as a negative number. It won't really matter because we're just looking for how many electrons are involved in that process. Okay, so if I fit this on my calculator, um, I'm getting a very huge number. Okay. Uh, what is it? 1,5 um, divided by 1,6 power of minus 19. I'm getting 9,375 times 10 to the power of 9. So that is the answer there. So it's 9,375 times 10 to the power of 9. Maybe if I can write it somewhere where it can be clearly seen. Okay. So this is... 9,375 times 10 to the power of 9 electrons. That's a lot of electrons. So, if we remove those that number of electrons from that material, we can actually change the charge into that. If we add this number of electrons, the material will become more negative. 
so we will go back again okay i know initially it might be a little bit confusing but if you just think of it in terms of to become positive you need to lose electrons to become negative you need to gain electrons okay so that does it for the introduction to electrostatics the principle of charge quantization every charge is made up of integral multiples of electronic charge in the next video we're going to discuss what happens now when two materials make contact and there's transfer of charge see you guys next time